Hello Vinyl community! So I have not done this for quite a while. Um, this is my first uh, VC oriented video for at least a month, if not even two. And um, yeah, I mean this is the last day of the year, so I thought I will sit down and do something uh, that is appropriate, like uh, my favorite records of this year, albums that um, I have immersed myself into most or that fascinated me the most in the course of this one year. So indeed there are some records in my list that are actually produced or released in 2020, but um, that's not the rule here. As you can imagine it will be a lot of stuff from the 70s as well. But um, some of it uh, actually material that I finally discovered for myself uh, for the first time, better late than never. Um, and um, so let's get on with it. It's not ranked in any way, I, it's just the way I've put it into uh, the box here. Um, probably with uh, the exception of maybe the last records, those I regard maybe a little bit separately. Um, as some truly wonderful gems that uh, I've listened to quite a lot this year, sometimes even for days and weeks. So uh, let's get on with it. Um, this was the last album by Alton Gunn, Getche, their second album. Um, as far as I know, they're just in the middle of uh, releasing their third album. Now the second one, as the first one, uh, was just great. Um, the sound of this band is just amazing and uh, the choice of uh, material is quite great and the arrangements, how they uh, pick up uh, Turkish compositions from the 50s and 60s and completely rework them into this kind of a uh, almost disco-ish uh, surf rock sound uh, is pretty exciting and um, this is uh, certainly an album I've enjoyed quite a lot. This is Getje by Alton Gunn, released on Glitterbeat. Next is the debut album by Derya Yildrim and group Shimshek called Kar Jagar and uh, this is a actually a I think Hamburg based uh, group playing Turkish uh, music with a certain psychedelic vibe or spin to it. Um, but at the same time quite based in traditional Saz music and uh, it's a pretty cool album. It's great fun to listen to it. And an album like that can be a really great companion uh, through the day. Um, so um, check it out if you don't know it. Um, it's pretty cool music with a great uh, front woman uh, and with a wonderful voice and uh, a great sort of a Turkish traditional sound uh, mixed uh, with uh, kind of a late 60s uh, psychedelic vibe. This is a wonderful album that I've listened to quite a lot. It's called it's called Bubiruya by Dirt Music. This is the last album by Dirt Music. This is basically a German based band that uh, has kind of members from a all around the world. I think one of the guys is from Australia. Um, this album here is uh, recorded together with Murat Ertel from Babazula and his handwriting is certainly all over the place with this album. Um, this is a kind of a concept album entirely dedicated to the theme of migration, particularly Middle Eastern migration and uh, certainly uh, taking more the perspective uh, of those that migrate. This makes this album pretty political to some extent, but at the same time um, it's a beautiful kind of contemporary psychedelic rock that uh, is extremely hypnotic and uh, that uh, you can totally lose yourself in the music. It's like somehow it's like wandering through the streets of Istanbul without uh, any kind of map, just following your intuition. It's a very interesting album and it's a great joy to listen to it. This came out on Finders Keepers and this is quite an amazing record with the music of Gökçen Kainatan. Gökçen Kainatan uh, is this uh, 
Turkish artist that uh, was very innovative in the early 70s uh, to the extent of uh, creating his own electronic instrument and kind of became uh, a overlooked pioneer of uh, electronic music and uh, it's certainly someone who appeared as a session musician on many uh, rock and funk recordings in Istanbul from this period of time so um, his stamp is actually over a lot of uh, music from those years and um, so he's probably one of the most influential uh, artist uh, of this era and yet uh, strangely overlooked many times. Uh, he uh, released uh, a whole bunch of seven inches in the late 60s early 70s uh, mostly uh, presenting uh, his uh, unique um, musical sound palette that he had developed uh, and um, yeah this album is kind of a review or a oeuvre of uh, this work and uh, kind of compiles all of these seven inches into one record and it's quite wonderful music um, it's uh, not always a clean-cut sonic experience because uh, the original material probably needed a lot of restoration work but um, in the spirit of uh, musical archaeology this is an exciting amazing uh, album uh, showcasing one of the great pioneers of uh, Turkish rock music. So if you don't know this one check it out uh, this is pretty exciting. Gökçe Kainatan. The following album pretty much blew me away. This is Istikrarli Hayal Hakikatir by Gaya Suakiol, her latest album. This is quite incredible. Um, she is a very eclectic and extremely smart artist. Um, the music creates fascinating bridges between uh, traditional Turkish music and American surf rock uh, combined with uh, flamenco and dark new wave and um, whatever. I mean she is completely out of control on this record but uh, at the same time it's all beautifully produced. She has a great band of incredible musicians and um, yeah, this is an exciting album that uh, doesn't get boring for a second. Um, so uh, for me right now, this is as far as Turkish pop music goes right now. This is my number one. Gaya Suakiol is just the greatest Turkish singer right now, I think. And uh, and her songs are very witty. You know, she 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 produces music quite in the spirit of um, Aki Koyano or Kate Bush. She's a very different type of singer and very different type of musician, but um, her approach to songwriting uh, seems uh, very similar. So uh, if you don't know Gaya Suakyo, check it out. You probably will not regret it. Yeah, now let's get into some kind of a psychedelic jazz funk music. Uh, so uh, Automatic came out by Mild Life from Melbourne, Australia, uh, their second uh, LP. Brilliant, brilliant record. Um, kind of a great, great contemporary pop album with a lot of jazz and jazz funk aesthetic in it. Um, um, great singer, wonderful bass playing. I kind of like everything about this record. It's pretty cool. So I think right now this is one of the coolest bands around. My Life, Automatic. Now this album here I have known since I was probably 13 or 14 years old and as a teenager I listened the hell out of it. I'm talking about the 1973 album Solar Fire by Manfred Mann's Earth Band. Now um, as I said as a teenager I really love this album because uh, it's the kind of big canvas music that a teenager can really enjoy with the giant kind of cosmic themes and at the same time it's a cool feverish psychedelic sound with uh, exciting guitar solos and amazing keyboard parts and and uh, great vocals and um, it's all very imaginative it's all very uh, mystical also and very kind of spiritual um, I think um, in the later years after I kind of came into my 30s, I have 
rather abandoned this album uh, probably for a bit of a almost ideological reason because uh, in this part of my life I kind of started to uh, to mature grow into a sort of a heavy duty agnostic and I probably didn't like all these kind of a uh, religious undertones on this record to put it mildly although it would be very wrong to say that this is a religious album I think it is mostly a deist album and um, but uh, this would be a debate for another issue um, considering the large amount of rather spiritual and occasionally religious albums I do have in my collection and the question how I want to approach them and uh, kind of deal with them. So um, interestingly after this giant hiatus I kind of returned to this album and started to give it again a listen uh, kind of allowing myself to be entered by all these dazed uh, ideas uh, on this record and um, it was nice really to uh, confirm again that this is a wonderful record this is very exciting music and uh, uh, kind of probably the best album that uh, the Earth Band had recorded and they did some really good records um, but this one is uh, quite a amazing uh, musical statement uh, so um, I kind of glad that I have reconnected with this record and uh, now I enjoy it again yeah this one is really unique and fascinating this is You by Gong now um, I finally got around to study more the kind of original Gong lineup uh, before uh, it was taken over by Pierre Morlin. Now uh, I've talked a lot about the Pierre Morlin years uh, on VC and uh, showing my albums, uh, but I've always a little bit neglected kind of the the original psychedelic era of Gong. It's not everyone's cup of tea, for sure, particularly um, because uh, kind of David Allen's style of songwriting and um, this kind of a druggy psychedelic uh, hippie elements that he's so famous for. Now um, I don't like this aspect of Gong that much to be honest but in all fairness those kind of uh, goofy songs uh, are always very short and in the overall length uh, they hardly make more than 15% or 20% of the album. Um, the rest of this record is just a hilarious uh, progressive rock with a strong psychedelic and kind of a proto ambient atmosphere, um, some amazing guitar playing by Steve Hillich. So this album is great fun and uh, very exciting and uh, with some tracks that uh, are completely intoxicating. So it is a great record, You by Gong, and uh, certainly one that I've enjoyed a lot in 2020. The last two albums I'm showing you are kind of my two favorites of this year. First of all, Bundles by Soft Machine. Uh, this is the one uh, Soft Machine album that features Alan Holdsworth on guitar. Now Alan Holdsworth is without doubt my favorite guitar player and uh, People usually mention the band UK uh, as an example of Alan Holdsworth playing, but I always felt that UK, while being a great band with a great record, um, UK was always much more focused on Eddie Jobson as a kind of an Eddie Jobson oriented album and I uh, always felt that Alan Holdsworth kind of held back uh, in UK. But here in Soft Machine the, the approach is kind of very different. It's more like, hey, Alan, you are in the band now. Now uh, rip all the stitches. And <laughs> it's an incredible, incredible uh, guitar solo oriented album by probably the greatest uh, prog and fusion guitarist of all times. Um, at the same time, wonderful, wonderful organ and keyboard playing by Rutledge. Um, also, there's a lot of back and forth between Holtzworth and Rutledge, uh, just uh, kind of exchanging solos. It's entirely instrumental, this album, and uh, 
even even within the soft uh, machine catalog, uh, it's a bit of a unique record uh, and probably a little more accessible than some of their other productions. Um, but um, at the same time, wonderful kind of atmospheric uh, proto ambient track at the end of the record and. Uh, Great album, great drumming. Um, I like every minute of it. I mean, when I I didn't I I always knew that this album is around, but I never got around to it to listen to it. And um, when I finally bought it, I put it on the turntable, and from the first minute, I knew that this is genetically engineered to fit <laughs> my cravings and desires. So, yeah, bundles by Soft Machine. Wow, what a wonderful, wonderful proc slash fusion album with uh, some exciting amazing musicians particularly the amazing Alan Holdsworth and finally probably the champion of this selection that's why I kept it for the last um, Cloud About Mercury by David Torn now this album is just great fun from beginning to the end. If you like cinematic, atmospheric music that is experimental, that is uh, very proggy, very imaginative, this is your type of album. This came out in 1987, um, including including a pretty hilarious lineup uh, with uh, Tony Levin on bass guitar. Bill Bruford on drums, uh, Mark Isham on trumpet, and obviously uh, David Torn on guitar. Wonderful sound, fascinating music, uh, very, very evocative, uh, very jazzy in part, very kind of a fourth world music type of sound. Uh, probably uh, because of the presence of Tony Levin and Bill Bruford, um, a certain association with King Crimson come to mind. There are aspects on this album that are quite uh, reminiscent of uh, the 80s uh, phase of King Crimson, particularly Bruford's rather ethnographic and yet digital drumming here. It's quite interesting. Um, Tony Levin is, as expected, quite wonderful here. But uh, also Mark Isham and his, uh, his, his trumpet playing has always been really fascinating because uh, kind of like John Hassel, which would probably be the other example of a trumpet player that went on a musical journey, Mark Isham certainly takes the instrument to a different kind of level, to a different kind of sound um, and it's all very cinematic and adventurous so um, it's the kind of uh, instrumental album that uh, it's a great uh, soundtrack if you are maybe on a journey or if you have to travel somewhere. Superb music, uh, amazing uh, combination of four extremely, extremely experienced and talented musicians. Um, great stuff, great stuff from the very first second till the end. Um, I really enjoy this album and uh, that's why I kind of put it at the end of the line just to highlight uh, how... Uh, amazing i find it so uh, that was it and because this is far too long i will not say anything else uh, except um, have a great new year's day if you can in this time and age and in the situation we are all thrown into and uh, yeah um, let me know if uh, there was something that you find interesting and um See you next time in 2021. Have a nice day. Goodbye.